stuff from Peter Dalit again. He just quoted because he just started to speak about this. Okay. Maral, Perak Dalid, the Sivir Sashem. Perakbo, Boloi. Omreb Shuvar and Achmoni, Omreb Yonason. Maidik Siv, Lomazim Mechir Biyat Ksil. Why should this Mechir, this, this purchase, be in the hand, hands of a fool? Oilem le Talmidicha Chomim, woe to the Talmidicha Chomim, the Torah sages. Shaoskim the Torah, Aim Bem Yerushamayim. They engage in Torah study and they have no Yerushamayim. Machrez Rabbianai, Rabbianai would announce, Chavala man de Lesley Darso, Vitaro le Darso Ovid. Woe to the one, he doesn't have a room and he fashions a door for the room. If you don't have a room, what are you fashioning a door for? Omele Rovle Rabbonon, Rovle said to the Chachomim, Mematusa of Minaichu, I beg of you, Lo Sirsu Tati Gehenim. I don't want you see, to see Gehenim twice. Omer Abishuv and Levi, Maidich Siv, Zosa Torah, So Moshe. What do you mean, this is the Torah? The Torah, this means, if it's one way it is, if it's not, it's not. Zoha Nasas Lo Sam Chaim. If a person is meritorious, the Torah will be some chayim, be a life potion. Lo zocho naso samamovis. The Torah it becomes actually poison. Behind the domer rovo zocho isle sam de chayi. Lo zocho isle sam de musa. If you merit, you merit. Then the Torah itself is a serum which gives you life. If not, it's the serum which gives you death. Omrev Shimon Achmoni, Omrev Yonas, and Ksiv, who the Hashem Yishori, Misam Chilev, the dictates of Hashem are, are straight, are rational, fair, and therefore brings joy to the heart. Ksiv Amoras Hashem Tzrufa, the the statements of Hashem are what have been purged in the kiln. Tzrufa. Zoch Misam Choso, if a person studies Torah properly, it will bring joy to his life. Lo Zocho. And if not, it will totally consume him. It will be totally consumed by it. Lemiso. He's going to explain. He's going to explain all this. Meaning if the person doesn't study Torah properly. If a person is married, so he becomes solidified for life. He becomes consumed for death. You know, the Umar says, Kod Varek Hashem Numa Hashem. Torah is fire. It's fire. So if you take, if a person, if you have a certain type of metal, and you put it in the fire, you're able, it actually, by heating it, that for, that's part of the forging process. You heat it, then you put it into cold water, that forges, that strengthens the steel, the iron. Another kind of metal, you put it, in, you put it in, into, into a fire, it goes to the heat, it'll totally liquefy, and you lose the whole, you'll lose whatever you put in there. So it depends what you're made of. So if a person is what studies Torah with purity, the Torah, that person, the Torah will actually forge him and strengthen him. The person who has other ideas, and he's a, that corrupted person who studies Torah, he's not studying Torah for the right reason, the Torah being fired, the fire will destroy him. That's what it's saying. That's by a snake. That's when you've been by a snake. That's by a snake. Okay? Slow death. Yiris Hashem Torah. Omed is Lord. Omer bin Nechunyu. Who's it for? Yiris Hashem. One who has pure fear of God. That will be, be forever. Omer bin Nechunyu. Zalomi Torah betairo. That's a person who studies Torah in the state of purity. What is that? By he no se'ish v'akach lomi Torah. He first gets married. Then he studies Torah. As a result of this... Since he satisfies his, sa his sexual needs, so when he studies the Torah, it's with, with, with a clear, pure mind. The testament of God is, is faithful, and it wisens the fool. Torah wisens the fool. What's a pesi? A pesi is no, uh, a person who was a limited IQ is not a fool. A person who should know better is a fool, and he doesn't do the right thing. Now, if he he know he should know better, why isn't doing the right thing? The answer is because he has desires, he has conflicts, he has conflicts of interest. 
the conflicts of interest don't allow him to see to, to behave properly or to take advantage of what he should understand is advantageous to him. By studying the Torah, that's machkimas pesi. This barasi Torah versus Torah tavlin. Pesi comes to word he's mefute. He's seduced. Person is seduced by his evil inclination. So how do you dispel the evil inclination? Kudi Hashem, right? It's edus Hashem nemono machkimas pesi. It widens the, the hedonist because the person sees exactly he's, he's, he's no longer under the influence of his evil inclination. Omer abchiyo nemenesi loi belom deo atkan. Okay. Now the Maharal is going to explain everything that's been said. <laughs> You have a chance. Doesn't mean it. Yes. Doesn't mean it's always going to work. But it has more value than never said. No? The only reason why the shalosh has value because you have a chance of arriving at right. Really, you should be punished when you study shalosh It's a, it's, a, it's a disgrace. Better not to study. Can't it's like you know you're saying to God, if it would be up to me, I wouldn't look at you. But I know since you can beat me up, that's the reason why I'm doing it. It's, it's, it's arrogance, right? You really believe in God. What? You believe in God. You believe in God that he can beat you up. Yeah. Or you, you believe God c- could give you that special handout. That's, that's a violent. No, I'm, I'm, yeah, but still, but it, it's a disrespect. It's a, it's, it's a disrespect. You're saying, I couldn't care less about you, but I'm only concerned about myself. Right? So there's an acknowledgement to a degree, but simultaneously, it's, it's, it's a disrespect. So therefore, you'd say definitely it shouldn't have that special value, which it doesn't. It should have almost no value. The answer is, since it has the potential to bring it to that special level, therefore, even with such an attitude, it has value. Hashem is willing to look away because it, it's, it, it has that potential to, to bring it to a, no, to a more advanced level. You mean I know that. doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference. But still, <coughs> why are you studying? You believe in God, I'm studying because I, I, I couldn't care less about God. I mean, it, it, I own my self-interest. I mean, even if what it means is no better. If you any this human being, they should know better. The example I give a person who works for a company, 50 years, never missed a day in 50 years. He's the the model employee. So he now at 50 years, the, the owner sells his company to another party, and he wants to introduce the his model employee to the new new employer, to the new owner. So you see this man, 50 years. He hasn't missed a day. His dedication is unbelievable. He pride himself. He says, he says to the new buyer, he says, you want to I couldn't care less about this company. If I could get it, a dollar more elsewhere, I'm out of here. The owner hears this. He's shocked. He never believed it. The man couldn't care less about the company. He believed all along. He was dedicated. and He lived for the company. Now he hears. It's, it's, so it's the same thing. He says, I couldn't care less about you. If I wouldn't get what you give me, I'm out of here. Nevertheless, you know it's interesting. If a child would say that to a father, right? The child says, you know something, thank God he's learning. You know? He'll arrive someday. Because the father could look away. Because that's the father son relationship. Could, that's the only reason why Mitok Shloshim or Bodoshim. No, Hashem's willing to put up with us. But if we wouldn't be his children, he wouldn't put up with us. No, but I'm saying that's the reason why it is arrogance. It's, how often does a, a child speak to a parent not respectfully? You know, the Gemara says by Rim Nechunya ben Akone. It's a mission, a mission of kindness. Then it rain, and Rim Nechunya and Chone uh, Abagil. You know, he starts praying, and all of a sudden it comes down in, in driplets. Hashem, he says, Hashem, you think this is going to get us out of, out of our problem? It comes down in torrents. He says, Do you want to flood us out? Then it rains normally. This is the way he speaks to Hashem. So Shimon Shetach sends him a, a message. He says, Choni, in truth, you deserve to be excommunicated. Because the way he spoke to Hashem is with a disrespect. But because you're like a child to a, a son, father, a child speaks to a father differently than a stranger speaks to, 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 a, to a king. Therefore, you don't deserve to be excommunicated. So it's the nature of the relationship. So because it's Bonam Atem Hashem Elokechem, that's why otherwise Hashem would not tolerate it. Fathers want to put up with, with a lot of things with the child to be continued. Wait, we have a few minutes. Yeah, yeah we have time. Okay. Key. 
Prikas ol Yerushamayim. A person goes and he throws off the yoke of Yerushamayim. Shach betam tchochem yosem b'shar b'nei odom. Babur shumake kono. Who, who has a greater recognition of his maker? A Tam Tchochem or an ordinary person? Tam Tchochem. Right? Ner Mitzvah Torah. Or you have, a, you have a, a degree of clarity. So if you have a level of clarity because you've studied, how do you do what you want? How do you just cast off the Yerushalayim? You have no fear of God. Lefichok dovzeh nechshav prikas mor Yerushalayim. Therefore, this person... When he doesn't do the right thing, it's considered he's throwing off the yoke of Yerushalayim, a fear of heaven. And because he's the Tam Chochem, he represents what you should do, proper behavior. If he doesn't behave properly, others learn from him. Woe to the humanity, they engage in Torah, and they have no Yerushalayim. What is one thing after another? Ratzon Omar, Kamehim Avsidim. How great is the loss going to be? Shoyeruim l'mal el yona gedola. They should have achieved, and they would have received great reward and great advancement and distinction. Ba'achshav l'mal el yona nepach l'mroh. Not only don't they achieve that special distinction, the claim against them is greater, because you should have known better. How do you not know? You see clearly. If you see clearly, how do how do you not have hear shemayim? You know, this is similar to Amalek. This is Amalek. This crazy Amsot, they attack us. Hashem says they will be able to. Everybody saw, everybody trembled. And you saw, so how do you attack the Jews? So what does that mean? Lo yore elokim. How does the, the Torah depict Amalek? Lo yore elokim. That attack, that affront was an indication they, fear, they don't fear God. So they don't, a lot of people don't know. This is after Kriyas Yamsov. How do you not? It's so obvious and blatantly clear. How do you attack us? The answer is because they don't fear God. So the Talmud Chochem, that through his Torah, he has a recognition. So if you have that level, how do you not fear God? So they put the claim against the person. It's an arrogance. You know, I have my own mind, mind to do what I want. Is that, is that why someone who's on such a high level um, and does maybe even something that seems minuscule wrong? He's punished to a greater degree. He's punished. No question. It's, it's more than that. It's more than that. A person who knows better, most people, if even though you know, you're really out of touch. You don't have the sense of its value. So you know something, even though it's deliberate, but it borders on inadvertent. It's like show gig. Because the person doesn't fully grasp the gravity of the wrong. You do grasp the gravity of the wrong. So therefore, when you do the wrong thing, it's like mazed. Or it's like gross negligence. It's gross negligence. If you understand its value, how do you, how do you get distracted? You can a person flying a F, F100 and, and whatever they call it. I know, 21 or whatever. It's 36, they didn't even manufacture it yet. And then he gets a call, and he takes the call while he's flying, unrelated, and he gets distracted. What is it? He deserves to, he understands where, where, what his responsibility is. That's the Tamil Chochem. You understand, you know, you're flying, uh, you're beyond cloud nine. We, 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 how do you get distracted? So that, that's gross negligence. Gross negligence, you deserve to be punished. That's the court martial. The ordinary person, what does he know? Even if he knows, he doesn't know. People, of course, I'm a Sabbath observer. You know, anytime, you know, he carries, his, his, he carries something in his pocket. Just he carries his, his lifesavers. And then lifesavers because he doesn't want to have bad breath in shul. That's going to save his life. Okay? Maybe the other guy's life. <laughs>